Hi, and welcome to Science Time with Miss Victoria. This program is recommended for ages 6 and up, but it also depends on the science slash STEM experiment that we are going to be doing today. So let's go ahead and begin. Now remember to always wash your hands for at least 20 seconds before you do touch anything dealing with the science experiment or gathering supplies. So if you've already liked our Facebook page and subscribed to our YouTube channel, Corpus Christi Public Libraries, you will see a video in which I wash my hands to the Ryan Forever Jaca, and I do top and bottom. Once I have the soap and do in between, I rub it all together, get nice and lathered, and I'll do that slow and I'll repeat it fast. And then I'll rinse my hands and make sure they're nice and dry. Once we do that, it's about 25 seconds. Our next step would be to gather our supplies, but I have yet to tell you what we are doing. So let's go on and move to the next item, which is to have adult supervision, just in case. Now it doesn't hurt for adults to be present when it comes to these science experiments. It's just fun interaction with your child doing a science project or experiment together. Plus you can help supervise, you can help them gather the supplies, and of course just enjoy it in general with them, okay? Now, you kind of have an idea of what's going on maybe, but let's go ahead and move on and find exactly what we're doing and the supplies we will need. Okay, we are gonna be gathering supplies for stress balls. All right, now I know I, you're probably thinking, Miss Victoria, you've done stress balls already, but there's different ways you can make stress balls and of course different materials that can go into the stress ball. So let's go ahead and find out which items we're gonna be needing to make these stress balls, all right? First, as always, we're gonna need balloons. Now, you should have some left over because we've been doing a lot of experiments that deal with balloons, but if you've already ran out, Go to Dollar Tree, go to General, go to Walmart, any of the stores, and go ahead and get another pack of balloons, okay? It's always good to have them on handy because a lot of these science experiments are going to require balloons. All right, next thing we need is an empty water bottle. Now you can just, I would prefer just a water bottle if you do Gatorade or any of the other types of sports drinks you may have that are empty. Uh, you might have to gauge your water balloons to be, I mean the balloons to be bigger. Don't use water balloons, in other words. <laughs> Those are kind of small. So you might want to get bigger balloon size because it has to fit over the opening of the bottle. So that's why I find it easier just to do a, a water bottle because it's a little smaller, the opening, and easier for any type of balloon size to fit. We're also going to need flour. Here's a little change from the last time we did stress balls. It's not water beads, it's flour. So we'll continue on the steps to find out how we're going to be using that. You're also gonna need a funnel. This will make it a whole lot easier when it comes to the experiment. A Sharpie, you need a Sharpie marker. Now the reason I said Sharpie is because it's a permanent marker. A lot of times when it comes to permanent markers, first thing we think of is Sharpies. I'm gonna be using just a black Sharpie. That's all you really need. However, if you want a colored Sharpie, they are colored Sharpies, so if you have one at home, fine. If you have a different type of permanent marker that's colored, use that. Uh, do not use regular markers like your Crayola, those are washable. That worked for the rainbow experiment, but it's not gonna work for this one. You need the permanent marker. So if you don't have a Sharpie, you might wanna get one or get some type of permanent marker that you find at any of those stores, okay? Last thing is optional is yarn. Now you can see I don't have yarn here because I'm not gonna be using it for my example for the experiment, but you can have yarn and just cut it in, you just need the strips, but if anything, you can have the ball of yarn, and when we get to the steps, I'll explain about the strips, okay? So, let's go ahead and move on straight to our steps. All right, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm excited because this is a different stress ball. It's always fun to do these stress balls. 
Another good one I love to do is uh, uh, the calming bottles. I like the calming bottles as well. I love the relaxation. So first thing in our steps is going to be pour flour into the water bottle. Okay. So let's go ahead and get I'm going to get one of my water bottles. Now you'll see my water bottle has a, it looks like it's not clear it has some flour in it because I've already tested as always I've tested because I have my examples right here. All right. Now parents on this part you might want to just have the child hold the bottle while you pour the flour. Okay? Because what happens with flour is when you pour it slowly, you might get that one clump and it's all going to fall in and it might knock the bottle over and it's going to spill all over the place. So I'm going to be doing it just holding the bottle myself and the flour. But you can have the child hold the bottle while you pour the flour in. Now the amount of flour depends on you how big you want the stress ball to be. And if you get a clump, because you know you, that's going to happen, you're going to get that clump of flour. Put that aside. Just go ahead and tap it on the bottle so that it falls through. It breaks apart and it's going to go right into the bottle. So you might, if it does happen like a clump, the child can hold it. You may want to switch and you hold the bottle while the child goes ahead and taps the funnel because that might be a fun thing for them to do. You may switch places, in other words, switch to the, your roles. about a pretty decent amount. I think I'm just gonna add just a little bit more. It doesn't hurt. Put a little bit more. All right, that looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and flip my funnel over. Now you can notice I have a paper towel, so you might wanna spread a paper towel. If you're doing it on your counter, you can just do it on the counter and just wipe it down later. But I have a paper towel just in case, or you can use a container also. All right, now next step is to blow up the balloon a little bit and place it over the neck of the water bottle. So this is why I'm saying the size of the water bottle all depends on the balloon size also. So if you get a, your water bottle has a big opening, you might want to get a bigger size balloon, okay? So I like to stretch my balloons a little bit. Remember, practice our breathing exercise that we do for the fit and fun, but we're gonna go ahead and do it for blowing the balloon. Go. All right, so I blew mine a little bit more than normal, but you just want just enough. You don't want to make it full blown. Now, make sure, Pentis, you definitely going to help. If you blew the balloon up, great. You can have your child hold the bottle while you place it over because what you're going to have to do is you're going to pinch it to make sure the air doesn't come out. Stretch the balloon a little bit because we want to get it over the opening. You want to cover it complete because you don't want it to spill out. Next thing is to turn over the water bottle and transfer the flour to the balloon, okay? So just like the funnel, you may have to shake it, the bottle up and down or just pat it at the top so that it'll fall down into your balloon. Now, once you get all the flour, the next thing is to remove it from the water bottle and let the air out slowly and tie the balloon, okay? Because if you do it too quick, flour is gonna go all over the place because you're laying out that air. And since this flour is very, it's powdery, so the air is just gonna shoot it out of the balloon. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep tapping it. You may wanna shake it a little bit, that might help. So any which way that makes it easier for you, the shape, I'm just going ahead and just tapping away, and that just kind of makes it a little easier. The flower, you want to push it right down into the balloon. You might want to stretch the balloon and the water bottle so make sure that it's going down. Because the opening down here is small, so we got to make sure that flower is actually getting in there. I like to alternate from holding the balloon and moving the water bottle up and down. And then of course tapping it, because you gotta break it apart. The flower tends to get into clumps. All right, we're almost there. 
Perfect. Now parents, what you can do on this point is have the child pinch the balloon right here at the top, right near the neck. And all you're going to do is to slowly, whoop, got to be careful there, remove it from the water bottle. That's going to be the hard part of removing it, okay? Now, since the kid has a hand on here, what you're going to do is slowly, just like I said, let the air out. Keep the hand, your hand at the bottom. Have the child have their hand at the bottom so they can feel when the right amount of air is taken out, okay? And see, I'm doing it very slowly because if I'm not letting go of the balloon too much, I still have it pinched, but I'm just opening it just a little bit. Because if I open it too much, flour is going all over the place. All right. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and tie it. So if you want, you can take over unless your child knows how, let them tie it. Okay, so now that we have it all tied and everything's done, not yet though, we need to use a Sharpie to draw a face on the balloon. So we're gonna do this part first. Just gonna go ahead and draw a little face. Since I used a yellow balloon, it almost looks like I have a limit. This is why you want the permanent marker because if not, this is just wipe off real quickly. Now I'm finished, my stress ball is finished now. However, if you had yarn, cut into little strips. And this is why you're gonna add it to the balloon. You're gonna add it right here at the top where you tied it. You can use regular school glue or tape. You don't wanna use any even cold, hot glue, cold glue gun or a hot glue gun because that'll go through the latex and the flower just come out. So either use tape or the clear school glue, glue stick, whatever you need to, and you can put yarn at the top just for a little hair for your little stress ball. Once you're done, now you can go ahead and squeeze it. Now this is great for any, every day. Any day you can make one of these and just do it nice and relaxing. Of course, with the holidays all coming, this might be a little, might be nice to have to, you know, help calm and relax. But in general, these are great, quick, and easy to make. I hope you enjoyed it and had fun like I did. So now you have two ways to make a stress, stress ball. You can use look at my other video in which I use water beads, or you can look at this one that I use flour and decide which one, or be dangerous and do both of them. Do one water with water beads and one with flour. That'd be great, and you can compare those. This is a very good, fun, quick, easy one to do. So put that there. 
Now let's go ahead and move on and I'm gonna provide you with some library resources. So here they are. Okay. Now, these library resources can, of course, be found on our website, cctexas.com slash library. Use our library catalog, and you can search science experiments in the search bar. You can search STEM experiments, it's S-T-E-M, which is Science, Technology, Engineering, Math. Or you can do STEAM, which is Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. You can do either one of those. Now, if you want to be specific, I will go with the advanced search. And you can type edible science experiments, uh, chemical project, science experiments or projects, engineering, uh, balloons, catapults. You know, you can do a different one. Be specific in the advanced search if you want. Place them on hold and pick them up curbside. Make sure you do call whichever branch is closest to you, which is your home library and find out uh, their curbside hours because I know they're all changing because now we are open to the public for you to come in to browse. Now there are some a little bit of restrictions so make sure you contact that branch closest to you to find out how they're doing their browsing and of course their curbside so you can pick up your items if you prefer to pick them up curbside. Now you want a different option is to use our online digital resources. We have our Access 360 and, of course, Hoopla. Now, when you're on our website, you can click on these. And, of course, as a new user, go ahead and put your information for the Access 360, which is just going to be, you want to do the fill out the form, and it's just going to ask for your library card. This one, you just got Access 360. You're just going to log in. Once you're set up, just log in with your card number. Now, if you need help, as always, call the branches, and they can help talk you through um, setting up Access 360 as well as helping you set up through Hoopla. Hoopla is different, okay? Make sure on Hoopla, if you're a new user, you're gonna fill out the information just like Access 360, except it's gonna ask for an email and a password. Then it'll ask for your library card. The reason is, when you log into Hoopla, you're gonna have to log in with an email and a password. So make sure you remember your email and password that you use for Hoopla because if you use a different one, you're not going to have access and it's going to be hard for us to access that. But we will help you on that, okay? So call any of the branches. We'll definitely help you so you can use these, which are a little bit easier because if you're doing science experiments, you don't want to get them dirty. So you might want to use just your laptop or computer. Or better yet, if you have a smart device, go to your app store and download both of these apps. Works either way. All right? Now, Remember to uh, visit our Facebook page and YouTube channel, Corpus Christi Public Libraries. If you haven't already, please like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So you can go ahead and see all the videos that the libraries are providing for you. If you want it broken down, by all means, go to our website, cctexas.com library, and go ahead and click on the link, Virtual Programming. And that'll give you a breakdown of all the different programs and videos that the libraries are offering to y'all. If you need help finding books that deal with science experiments, STEM, any type of dealing with science or STEM, while you're on our, you, our website, cctexas.com library, go ahead and check out our online browsing options, you book alerts, author check, and of course, book newsletter. And just like I mentioned before, please do not forget our online digital resources, Access 360, and Hoopla. Now, as always, I will see you next time. Bye.